Good afternoon, colleagues. Today we have a press conference dedicated to the sentencing of Maria Kalesnikova and Maxim Znak. Please, those who hasn't changed their name in the Zoom yet, do this. State your name and media outlet. If you want to ask a question after our guests speak, raise your hand or write a question in the chat. I would also like to, to remind you that our press conference will last for one hour. Today, we have uh, Tiana Komic, member of the headquarters of Viktor Babarika, representatives of the Carnitian Council of Political Prisoners and sister of Maria Kolesnikova. Vladimir Pulchenko, a lawyer of Maria Kolesnikova. Nadezhda Znak, a lawyer and wife of Maxim Znak. Alexander Kolesnikov, father of Maria Kolesnikova. Alexander Znak, father of Maxim Znak. Hello. I would also like to remind you that we have a English interpretation track available. So if it's easier for you to listen to us in English, please select this option in the Zoom menu. If you choose the English track, you will hear everything in English. If you do it with the Russian, you will hear all the speakers and the press conference in Russian or Belarusian. Now I would like to give floor to the press secretary of Viktor Barikas headquarters, Mr. Gleb German. Good afternoon, colleagues. I'm very grateful to you for gathering here today with us. It's a bit late in the evening. We are particularly happy that you're so interested in this event. We have gathered all the, the most interesting speakers who will share with you the information that is available for now. We'll be happy to answer your questions later. We'll start with the introductory remarks and speeches of our speakers. And now I'd like to give floor to Vladimir Pulchenko. Vladimir Pulchenko, the lawyer of Maria Kolesnika, will tell us more about the details. I'll start by saying that today at noon, a sentence was passed by the Minsk Regional Court. Geographically, it happened in the Minsk Regional Court, as I said. When the sentence was announced, there were about 40, 45 people whom Maria and Maxim have not met before. Then eight more people, the family members, entered the room. According to the sentence, Maria Kolesnikova has been sentenced to 11 years of uh, prison restriction in the general regime colony and Maxim Znak will serve his sentence in a high security penal colony. They were uh, sentenced under the three articles. It should be noted that there are three charges. They, they were evaluated differently. For example, the Maria Kolesnikova was sentenced under Article 357, she received, she received 10 years, Znak received nine years under this article, under the Article 361, Maxim Znak received six years, and Maria received three years. As to the, the last article, Maxim received two years, and Maria four years. In total, Maria received 11 years and Maxim Znak 10 years. The sentencing did not last long. Usually it takes much longer because usually various issues are mentioned like lawsuits and so on. This time the CD discs were mentioned, they will be kept as evidence 
in the case. The regime that I mentioned, the general regime for Maria and the reinforced regimen, regime for Maxim Znak, and also the starting point, the sentence. So for Maria, it's starting from 8th of September 2020, and uh, for Maxim, it's 9th September 2020. This term of the in incarceration will also be considered as one day e equaling 1.5 days of freedom restriction until the sentence uh, becomes active this calculation will be in place we'll of course appeal the sentence we don't see that uh, any confirmation any proof of evidence in this case but that's in a nutshell what happened today I wanted to give floor to Nadezhda Znak, who is a lawyer of Maxim Znak, and also his wife. Nadezhda, please. Thank you, German. Vladimir told us how sentencing part took place. Of course, the whole text was not available has not been available to us lawyers and to our clients but uh, we would really like to know more about the motives on my part i would say that if we analyze the terms and sentences passed for maxim let's say article 351 part one Uh, here, the usual sentence is 8 to 12, and Maxim received 9 years. As to the Article 361, Part 1, Establishment of an Extremist Formation, Maxim was given 6 years of imprisonment. It's almost the maximum term, because the maximum is 7. As to the last article, the appeals, articles 361, part three, Maxim received the minimal sentence because uh, it, started, it can be from two to five years. That's what the court decided regarding the guilt and participation in the relevant crimes. Neither the lawyers nor Maxim agree or with the sentence uh, maxim will hold on to his position here and will not change it he will use all the available legal means like a, the possibility of appeal as a lawyer he will prepare the appeal himself we uh, will join this process we believe that the sentence passed uh, illegal and unjustified we also believe that the court made a, a number of violations uh, they made procedural mistakes and they applied the law in the wrong way and i'm not gonna uh, go deep now and um, because without the operative part and provisions we can simply discuss what we have and what else anyway it's just the beginning the appeal will be prepared and filed in the necessary time frame will be uh, also reviewed by the appellation court and then we'll be Спасибо, discussed further thank you Nadezhda I'd like to give floor to Tatiana Khonis sister of Maria Kolesnika Good evening, Tatiana. Please tell us what do you think about the sentence? Uh, 
Good evening once again. I would like to start by thanking, by thanking the lawyers of Maria and Maxim. Not all of them are here today, but I would like to thank them for the, the work that they did. As you know, the lawyer of Maria was deprived of her license. During the year, it uh, means that the legal case uh, in, in uh, has been illegal from the very start since the time when Maria was uh, kidnapped and jailed. All this time when uh, she was not allowed to see her relatives almost for a year, and so far none of them have managed to managed to see her in person. It's uh, actually illegal. Of course, this sentence cannot be considered legal because it wasn't public, it wasn't open for the public. As we know, Maria and Maxime was, were sentenced for being public in the summer of 2020 for acting publicly. All their actions were aimed at the creating dialogue, uh, uh, involving more people and uh, taking country out of the critical situation. But now we'll see that the, the authorities are dealing in a harsh way with the opponents. So I believe that it explains uh, the harsh sentences. I would also like to support Alexander Nikolaevich, father of Maxim. Hold on, hand in there, Nadezhda. Thank you very much. I uh, cannot imagine how difficult it is for you now to stay in Belarus under this constant pressure. Thank you. Right now, give floor to Alexander Nikolaevich Znak. Good evening. I would like to express my gratitude to uh, the lawyers and also to express my sympathies and condolences to the lawyers because in the considering the situation uh, today we may state clearly state that uh, whatever lawyers do will be deemed illegal i uh, in my letters i have asked um, my son to not actually use all the legal methods, but uh, he decided to do that. As you remember from the very start, I remember the article number, but under which he received two years, he was uh, in jail and under this article for four or five months. Then authorities came up with new charges and uh, eventually brought down to the sentence we know about now. I don't think we should uh, look for any sense here because the, in the address of one of the officials, the well, one of the officials said that it's not the, the time to keep to the law or to observe the law. And it actually explains everything that we are facing now. It uh, has been expected. It is quite clear today. Our task is to help the people in jail so that uh, they will manage to stay in, in jail as long as they have to preserving their health. Thank you, Alexander Nikolaevich. We have the last speaker, Alexander Pavlovich Kalesnikov. Good afternoon. Alexander Pavlovich, can you share your feelings about the sentence? First, I would like to welcome my daughter, Tatiana. I'd like to say hello to her. On the one hand, uh, it's a very sad day for me. On the other hand, uh, it's a very good day, a very joyful day because I managed to see my children, not as criminals, 
but as people who are free, who feel themselves free and innocent. The thoughts that uh, happened today, they showed that they are the court hearing is a is a game it's, it, it's wrong and i could see that they were not depressed i uh, didn't see that they agreed with what, with, with what was happening indeed they are people who know uh, that they're right and they're ready to stand for themselves i'm very grateful to the for the support we received not only today we feel the support every day i'm very grateful to the diplomatic corps uh, to diplomats and uh, journalists and uh, to people who came today to support us and our children i have uh, i said before that i'm looking forward to the times when our children will be free and i will be able to thank everyone who are supporting them who have been supporting them in the difficult times because i feel very well the situation in which they have found themselves in once again i would like to thank all the people who are interested in the life of uh, Maxima, Maria, and uh, lives of all the political prisoners and uh, trying to support us. Unfortunately, I uh, cannot remember everything. I don't remember everything, but uh, I uh, have everything in my heart, and I simply must give my feelings and the warmth to the people that uh, came to the court session today, and oh, I feel supported. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Now, uh, We'll start the Q&A. Please raise your hands. And I uh, try to give everyone an opportunity to ask questions. Please turn on your cam and address a particular speaker. Uh, Evgeny Kazartsev from your radio, please. Good afternoon. I'd like to ask a question to lawyers. The judge approved a, me a meeting, but uh, we don't know the day of this the meetings of Maria and uh, Maxim with their relatives. What do you think it may happen and how long they will last? I will answer the question. In the next 10 days, Alexander Pavlovich, Alexander Nikolaj will be able to see, the, to meet with the children. I uh, believe it will be one-off meeting. But uh, they will, uh, they can ask for another meeting with the children. I mean, uh, the, the visits to the to the jail. Uh, hopefully, there will be more possibilities to get uh, visitation and uh, visits to. I would also like to add that that these uh, visits are very well for the close relatives and the uncle is not a member of the close family 
So, uh, I, as uh, Maria's sister, cannot visit Maria. At 3 p.m. today, we, will, we already could visit Maria and Maxim in the temporary detention center because I went there to find more information about the, the open times and visitation times. Tomorrow will also be possible to do, as I said, through 3 p.m. today, they could uh, get a visitor. We'll try to get a, more permissions to visit them. Me and, and, uh, and our son will visit Maxim. So short-term visit uh, uh, means a one-hour meeting in the jail. It's a small uh, room with uh, phones and uh, probably a member of the representatives of the police present. Colleagues, any more questions? No, you're free to raise your hand. Turn on your cam. I also would like to ask a question about the defense. Do we know where Maria and Maxim will be sent to serve the jail, the jail terms? I'll start. There are very few options for Maria. I know only one colony for women in uh, Gomil. There could be one in Rechitsa, but I need to check that. But it all depends on the uh, on the special regime, depending on the how heavy the crime is and about the potential backsliders. So Maxim will go into the uh, reinforced regime. There are several places like that in Belarus. We don't know yet where he'll be sent. Probably we'll know when he is there and on the day when he will be sent there. As I said to Maria, there are places in Gomil, maybe some other places. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, according to the information on the website, or the special website, there are several colonies where he can serve his sentence and of the reinforced regime, several tens, several dozens. Uh, hopefully, there will be no changes until sentence is enforced and during the appellation process they will not be affected formally according to the law they cannot be taken to the prison until the, all the appellation courts are an appellation process is over all this time uh, our defendants will be in Minsk. We'll be able to meet with them and visit them. My uh, question from Reuters, uh, are there a plan to appeal the sentence? Are there chances, is there a chance that Marina, uh, Maria Maxim will be set free? Without a doubt, the sentence will be appealed not only by the lawyers, defense lawyers, but also by the defendants they have said that before why because they believe that the sentence is illegal and substantiated as unsubstantiated we uh, 
don't believe it's uh, legal to sentence them for the events that were not proven, for actions that were not proven. What about the chance? Uh, it's not only about, you know, chances of uh, getting free. Uh, it's about uh, people who are innocent fighting for their freedom with all their means. It's the first instance court uh, who can uh, uh, actually do something about the current sentence, but uh, there are also appellation courts that uh, will work later. The fact that the sentence will be cancelled, I have no doubt about that. I agree with the colleague. In any case, all the possibilities under the law will be used by us, defense lawyers. We should remember a joke. Uh, that says that uh, when uh, it's uh, a repeated several times. I mean, all the people will understand what's all the, what's it about. I mean, at all the stages of the hearing, we saw that the Maria and Maxim are innocent and will here can be compared to the doctor who is fighting for the life of a patient. We know that the miracles happen even in our legal system. The work that was supposed to be done by us, we'll do that. We'll complete all the work we'll do at most possible. We'll use all the opportunities. The second question from Reuters to Tatiana Homich. What actions will be taken by the coordinating council after the sentence? And what work is done towards political prisoners, not only Marie and Maxim, but others as well? Overall, the cases of uh, Maria and uh, Maxim, uh, who are well known for their activities, including their activities uh, at the headquarters of Victor Babarika, and since they're still members of the Credit Council, it uh, gives the case some more. Put, puts the case on the spotlight. We can see today that today's sentence has been made public and reported on in international media. And uh, uh, representatives of the United States also commented on that. The EU representatives commented on that. We hope that international media will report widely on this sentence. In the past, we uh, organized a campaign in favor of the public court. We received over 4,000 signatures from all over the world supporting this initiative. We'll start a similar initiative in, in support of Marie and Maxim and other Let's go prisoners because the whole world sees that and understands that this sentence is illegal. Now it's the, the necessary to make this case as public as possible. I would say that the case of Maria and Maxim, uh, who are well known uh, of all the political prisoners in a now we have 659 political prisoners officially recognized, but there are hundreds more who have not been officially recognized yet. In their cases, the sentences were politically motivated as well. We'll make use of the Politzek project, supporting the family members, uh, communication with international organizations. So we'll do our best to make 
to draw as much attention to these people as possible. Most important thing I believe now is receive the support of the international community on the issues of uh, the case of the political prisoners. Thank you. Next question from Nasha Niva representatives. They will be to the fathers of Maria and Maxim. Were your children ready for this harsh sentence? Alexander Nikolaevich, we'll start with you. I think they were ready. They might have believed that they could receive the longer sentence, the longer sentences as to Maxim. Uh, I think he was uh, actually worried about me and he was asking my uh, wife and my uh, daughter to kind of calm me down because I knew that uh, it would happen this way. The sentence for Max, Maxim sentence. I believe he uh, he was ready, and he wasn't nervous at all. My mistake was that I uh, actually made some. Uh, I was worried about him too much. What can you say about Maria, Alexander? Just like uh, Maxim's father, Alexander. Um, Alexander Nikolaevich, greetings to you. I saw that our children today were more nervous than us today, but they were not worried about the sentence, about the sentences, but more worried about us, about us and the family members. But by their attitude, by their behavior, by their utterances, by their words and feelings, they made it possible for us to take it easier than we could. I may be using the wrong words now, but it's no secret that uh, we meet under such difficult circumstances. I always feel that, that I uh, may get too nervous. But again, I want to repeat that thanks to our children, I felt that I was, I uh, took it with uh, big sadness, but I feel depressed. I wasn't discouraged by that. Next question is more political. Who does Tatiana Homish to answer it? Question from Sky News. Lukashenko is getting ready to sign the roadmaps for deep integration with Russia. What do you think it means for the future of Belarus? And what would you like to say to President Putin about the fate and uh, political prisoners? I believe that recently we, lately we've seen some contradictory opinions and remarks about this meeting. I haven't heard anything, any statements from Belarusian side that the roadmaps will be signed. I believe here we see another case of manipulation. Let's wait until the 9th of August, 9th of September, and we'll see what happens then. Because for now, it's the information is contradictory, controversial. Belarus lately became uh, um, not particularly convenient neighbor to all the nearest states. 
Several years ago, Lukashenko went to Ukraine for regular talks. Now, he neighbors and don't want to communicate with him, don't want to talk with him, and all this uh, forced landing of the airplane and the border crisis, they uh, really exacerbate the situation. Well, in the past, we were told that, uh, that all these issues are our own, including the political business issue. I believe now it's at, at a different level. And the people in the states are thinking whether it's uh, their interest to support this friendship. Thank you, Tatiana. Next question is to uh, relatives of Maria and Maxim from Max Mitruk, Navin.by. Are there any plans to protest against the sentence? Like a um, hunger strike. Mm, have you heard anything like that from uh, children? I hope that Maxim will not announce the hunger strike this time because he has some health issues to deal with. And I believe that uh, if he does that, will play in the hands of the people who want him to be uh, not capable of making appropriate decisions. I will try to meet him with him to visit him at 8 a.m. tomorrow. I will ask him to think more about his health and uh, to leave the political issues to the people who have experience in dealing with them. And his main task should be to preserve his health, take care of his health. Alexander Pavlovich, could you add something? Would you like to add something? There's not much I can add to this. On the other hand, of course, I uh, look forward to a visit to Maria and have a meet, meeting with Maria. I'll try to understand what is she thinks about it, what her next steps will be. So I believe we'll be able to answer this question after I meet my daughter. The next question is about the same media outlets. Will there be any pressure on Maxim and Maria in the colonies? Uh, any, have you thought about countermeasures if this happens? Right, I will answer that. Well, it, it, it may happen and it has happened to various prisoners. How can a defense lawyer react? First and foremost, we can visit our clients and uh, if we see there's some illegal activities, actions that are done towards uh, uh, our clients, we'll do our best in legal terms to prevent this. But since Maria was kept in jail all this time, both of them, came across some difficulties, to say the least. Uh, like they did not get the letters they were supposed to get. It was a law violation, but there were some minor issues that had to deal with. Maria had to uh, be in, she was kept in the same cell with the smoking lady although the majority of uh, her regular cellmates were not smoking, but she still she, will, she was kept in the same cell with a smoker. Also, she was uh, kept in special conditions. 
to add some limitations. Basically, there was an issue with the fresh air in the cell. Both Maria and Maxim had to deal with that. Basically, had no inflow of fresh air. So uh, we cannot guarantee that this will not happen again in the colonies. So we'll be reacting in, within the law the, and also making uh, these difficulties public as much as possible. The next question from Belsat. I think we'll, we have uh, answered part of the question already. We'll answer the part of the question that hasn't been discussed. Could you tell us more about the charges? Uh, how do Maxim and Maria feel? And is the last word, last plea available? And also, I'd like to add a question for myself. How long? Mm -hmm. uh, will the document uh, that they signed? How long will will, will be acting? I mean, the secrecy pledge and non-disclosure agreement. We don't know how they will. How long they will uh, last? And I don't think. Uh, um, last plea uh, of Marie and Maxim. I don't think they are available yet for the public, but I must say that they were very touching. I cannot reveal for the time being any more details about what was happening in the courtroom today, but you can also find some information in the website of the General Prosecutor's Office. You can find information about the uh, investigation and also find more information in the open sources, like the streams, press conferences, and so on. As to the second part of the question, it's difficult to add something more about the details because, as I said, we signed a non-disclosure agreement, non-disclosure statement. Until the court passes a decision, the non-disclosure statement will be in place for five or 10 years. It, nothing depends on us. I mean, we don't have any say in that. Indeed, the non-disclosure statement is uh, indefinite. Uh, I believe uh, we signed uh, this non-disclosure statement illegally. I mean, and also, the non disclosure statements were signed by the defense lawyers because the court sessions were closed, held under uh, closed doors. But I don't think it's illegal. So I believe those non disclosure statements are all illegal. I hope uh, Alexander fathers of Maria and uh, Maxim who could add something to this. I mean, they were in a good mood during the sentencing part. After the sentence was announced, I turned to Maria and I saw that she didn't have any other reaction on her face. So she was calm about that both before entering the courtroom and after leaving the courtroom, nothing changed. It was not a surprise for them. As to the case details, uh, we cannot give you more information about uh, uh, the particular things that we learned more during the investigation. As uh, my colleague already said, the 
Prosecutor General Office put some information on the website. And also, if possible, if need be, we can reveal some information, but it, we cannot reveal everything. We believe that the prosecution did not, the prosecutor and the charges were not proven. And we believe that uh, what they were charged with was totally unsubstantiated. Another question about the uh, the pardon possibility did maxim and maria receive any information about that i know that the people are signing have been signing such documents about the appeals for pardon well i start by saying that they were not uh, offered anything like that directly. Maria received the letter signed from by Mr. Vaskresensky. But Maria uh, did not react to such offers. Of course, it was a, if it was a concrete proposal, I don't think she would uh, actually sign any of such documents if a person believes that they're innocent i don't think they will do anything like this maxim is also uh, believes that he has nothing to do with the charges and he believes that he is innocent he believes that uh, there was no conspiracy and no extremist uh, attempt um, as to the concrete proposals there were none before the court hearing he received the letter from uh, the round table of democratic forces without a concrete uh, particular signature which says that the he could join this process of pardon appeals and I'll repeat that was before the hearing started at the time there was no information about the sentence so the maxim thought believed that that was a the document was illegal uh, because according to our legislation, uh, the, there's a possibility for appeal, an appeal for clemency if ready the sentence has been passed and uh, enforced. So that's it for now. And uh, if we considered what was happening in the country as a conflict between the parties like that is happening i would like to ask a question to alexander pavlovich alexander nikolaevich could you please share the information about what was happening uh, outside the courtroom who came to support maria and maxim how many people managed to get inside well, I will start. We agreed with uh, Alexander to meet outside the courtroom in the parking lot. We saw a lot of familiar faces there, sat low, and uh, as we were heading inside the building, the policeman on duty first 
check the list of people who are supposed to get inside. So there were five defense lawyers, Manas, plus eight relatives in the courtroom. We're much, we're very much surprised to see that the courtroom was uh, full of people and they were all silent. I thought they were, you know, mannequins. Uh, they did not express any emotions, how many emotions, most of them were wearing masks. Maria and Maxim were already communicating with them, thanking them for coming. So we sat down in the first row. I think uh, the courtroom was uh, could sit about 50 to 80 people. Out of 80 people, there were eight of us, relatives of seven to 10 people, and 70 people who managed to get inside. I wouldn't know who these people are, and I felt ashamed for the authorities uh, who did not make it possible for people who close relative friends who supported Maria and Maxim to get inside the courtroom, their colleagues. I would not say there were a huge number of people outside the courtroom, but there were about 100 people and half of them could get inside. And uh, we could say uh, you know, different things uh, about charges, about sentence. But when uh, such disrespect is uh, clear I mean, towards the relatives to the friends, when some 70 people were put there, the people that had nothing to do, probably had nothing to do with this case, I don't know why it was done. Alexander, could you add something? I had a similar feeling when I saw that. Thank you, Alexander, for what you said. I would, I would like to add about the, the order of the session. I came inside the courtroom before Maxim's relatives and uh, Maria saw me, she was happy to see me, she showed me traditional heart. You know that I usually get lost when uh, in such cases because I see that the room is full of people and you're looking for a place to sit down. But I think I was shown to a place where I was supposed to sit. You, so you're put, put in the first row, as if I'm a you know, small boy punished for something. Um, I, uh, before I sat there, I uh, was approached by a person who said that I should move because we were exchanging some, uh, you know, information with Maria. I was told to sit in the, in the second row with a finger, you know, you sit here. Right, I went there. Uh, I was approached by the secretary who said, you should sit in the first row where I told you to. So I said, you, you know, should actually, you know, make your mind because uh, about this, because uh, I have uh, been moving around here and there, so I, I need to find a place to sit down. Looks like the it was a bad planning on the side of the authorities. Maria started uh, laughing and said, Father, look how many familiar faces are here. And she said, come on, people, let's 
get to know each other. It was very emotional, as you may imagine. And I said that I don't see a familiar face here. Indeed, that was the case. I thought there would be some reaction from uh, the people that I didn't know, who looked like mannequins, totally unemotional. They were looking sideways and uh, did not want to see me in the eyes, to look me in the eyes. The same way, the high official that approached me later said that we cannot talk with Maria. I asked him, who, who are you? Please show me your ID. And he was silent and just looked me in the eyes without saying anything. And I thought that, you know, boy, that was a very strange person, very strange man. I've, that was the first time I found myself in such a situation. And I thought that if all the court hearings are, are held in such conditions, they, they should not be called democratic or just. This is suppression of, uh, of your violation of your rights and your freedoms. That was my impression. Thank you, Alexander Nikolaevich, once again for telling the story in detail. Colleagues, do you have any more questions? Please raise your hand or turn on your cam. We still have some time for Q&A. I don't see any questions. The final question to Tatiana Khomish from me. Apart from appealing the sentence, what else should be done to help Maxim and Maria in order to make information about this more public so that people sh could show they express their solidarity? Please unmute yourself, Tatiana. Uh, while working in the Victor Babarika headquarters, started, we started the PolitZec project, a virtual social feed for communicating with the political prisoners, where you can send something to political prisoners, write letters to them. Indeed was a way of, to, of expressing solidarity. Unfortunately, now in Belarus, it's very difficult to show that you're active, show solidarity. You're left with writing letters to the political prisoners, even bringing parcels to the jail. By doing this, you can be arrested for alleged picketing. Therefore, due to such conditions, it is important for us to be supported by the international community, by politicians. I will speak with them about Maxim and Maria and other cases of political prisoners. Uh, I believe they should uh, tell the Belarusian authorities that its situation is critical. And, uh, let them understand that they're constantly following the situation. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues, for participation, for your attention, and for the information that you shared with us. Uh, thank you for reporting on these cases. I would like to thank the lawyers. I'd like to thank the parents who are here with us. 
I would like also to thank the organizer of today's meeting, the press club. Thank you, Anton. I think uh, we're almost done here for today. Anton, please. Thank you, Gleb. I would like to thank all the participants of today's meeting. If you're watching this broadcast on YouTube, please like our videos and sign to our channel. Thank you and see you later.